Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. Here's another very neat piece of electronics goodness created by Hewlett Packard in the 1950s. This is an early digital electronic counter. So, you know, anything digital in the 1950s means there's going to be a lot of glass inside this case. There's going to be a lot of tubes in here. So many tubes, in fact, that they have an air filter on the side and the case is forced air cooled. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at its functions. Then we're going to open it up, take a look inside. Then we're going to power it up and see if it comes to life. Now, here's the thing. If it doesn't come to life, not a big deal. We're going to make it come to life. So by the end of the video, this bezel with the four Nixie tubes below it will display a count. So I'm pretty excited about seeing what's in here. You know as much about this unit as I do at this point. So let's discover what's inside this case together. Let's take a look at the functions on the face of this unit here. So it really is quite a big unit. You can see how far that goes down to the bench. So it's just about up to the lens here. Very, very close. So it just fits into the frame like this. So we have an on and off switch right here and a power lamp. There's usually an incandescent bulb under there and usually these unscrew. Yes, let's see if there's a bulb in there. There is, hopefully it's still good. Put that back on. Right beside this here, that's an input jack. So this is where we put the signal right here to make this thing display. We have input sensitivity. So this is just a gain control for the unit. You can kind of picture this like a gain control on a guitar amplifier. The higher you turn it up, the louder the amp gets. It's the same thing with this. The higher you turn this up, the more sensitive this gets to the input signal. We have a check down here. Uh, what that's gonna display, I have no idea, but we'll find out. And over here, we have display time increase. So that's basically setting the gate time. So you will speed the gate up or slow the gate down at this point here. And uh, infinite would most likely be hold like that. And uh, we have a reset here for most likely the manual position. We have uh, a bunch of gate uh, times here, one tenth of a second and one second over here. We have count and then something that's not listed down here. So we'll have to try this out and see what that does. And usually the gate bulbs are neon, and uh, from here it already looks like that, so it should be an orange type of lamp in there as well. I'll move it over to the side here. It does have a bit of rack rash. You can see on the screws here, that's not bad though. It's actually the face in the, of this unit is in very nice condition. Heavy. So there's a fan under this, and like in most of these units here, and this would be the filter. You can see it's open back here, so it does slide out, which is kind of nice. Sometimes they're pretty stuck. So there it is, and it's actually very clean. No, I haven't cleaned this or anything. This is just the way it is when I got it. So it's uh, definitely been taken very, you know, taken care of very well, I should say. So same with the other one that we looked at. It was very clean as well. I have not been inside this unit. So we're gonna discover this together. A lot of these pieces of electronic apparatus were extremely expensive back in the day, and uh, these were in facilities. Let's move this out of the way here, move all this out. And uh, these were in facilities, and they took very, very, very good care of them. So some of these were in clean rooms and things like that, and it's probably the situation with this unit as well, because it, from looking at that fan, it looks pretty spotless inside. We have an XLR jack on the back for something. Uh, we have a photo, uh, says here printer and photo, but uh, it's just capped off. External standard, uh, 0.1 of a second, one second adjustments on the back of fuse, which hopefully this is going to be good. It'd be a good thing to take a look at right now, wouldn't it? it? Looks okay. So that is a good sign. Whether it is okay or not, we'll have to find out. We have another jack on the back here for some form of accessory. And a capped off 10 second position because there was no 10 second position on the front. On this side, just a bunch of holes. So it would be pushing the air out this side, I would imagine. So it wouldn't uh, make too much sense to draw the air through this side and then filter it before it gets blown out of the other side, right? So that would be kind of silly if HP did that, wouldn't it? And uh, just the bottom portion here. And it's in really good condition. Again, you know, it has just, you know, a little bit of rash from being pushed in and so in and out of the racks and stuff like that over the years but all in all it's uh in extremely good condition like look at that look at the top right and the face is uh looking very very nice 
So what I'll do now is get the case off. That's one thing I guess I should have looked at. I don't think that would have anything to do with it. Usually HP is very easy to get into. So let's take a look at the back. Yeah, that would be it right there. Heavy to move this thing around. Okay, one of the screws is missing here, it looks like. This would most likely be the screw, and I bet you this very thin case would most likely just come right off. So what I'll do is, uh, let's just try this right now. I'm going to have to move this because uh, I won't be able to lift this off because of the camera. This thing is just so big. Let's see. Uh -huh, it's coming. Yeah, so that's it. So this will... This will come off like this. So let me reposition this and uh, we'll get the case off and take a look at what's inside. This should be exciting. All right, let's see if we can do the reveal like this, kind of on an angle. Let's see. I already see Alan Bradley resistors in the back there. My shirt here. And... There it is, a whole bunch of it anyways. Definitely hard to do with uh, holding this with one hand and having the case in the other. Put that off to the side. So there it is. All the counting modules in the front there. And it has that wonderful aroma of old electronics. So this looks very similar to the other HP digital counter that we recently take a look at, or took a look at in a video. Very, very similar inside. And it's just, uh, looks like it's just placed a little bit differently. Looks like it's missing something right here. And uh, that would be most likely the crystal. There's a switch here and they have it on line in it external. So it'll be using this instead of this. So it should still run without that, I imagine. So that would be something I would have to look through my stuff to find, see if I have another one for this unit. There is one in the other one that we looked at. So, uh... No worries there if something needs to be placed inside the socket. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. This cord is binding on everything. So let's move this rubbery cord through the case here. And get the case out of the way. Like so. Okay, so now I'm free of that. All right, so there we go. Lots and lots of vacuum tube goodness in here. Look at all those tubes. And in the back, more die film capacitors. These rectifiers that everybody is so incredibly scared of. They last a long time, as long as the capacitors don't fail ahead of them. That's what takes them out. Everybody thinks that those rectifiers just magically fail on their own. Nope. Bad capacitors do that. So I'm going to move that there. Put this down here. Like so. And on the bottom half, you can see it's very much like the other counter that we looked inside. There's more tubes on the bottom here. And the fan does spin freely. So that is a very good sign that this thing is still going to work. Move some of the stuff out of the way here. It's that one screw. So now the next thing to do is to power this thing up and see if it comes to life. So what I'll do is I'll position this so we can take a nice look at the vacuum tubes here and see their glow. And I'm gonna bring this up very slowly. So just like in the last unit, what I did is I plugged this into my isolation transformer and current limited variac supply. And I let this thing slowly come up for a long time. So this one here, I'm gonna let this one go for about a half an hour. So I'm gonna slowly bring this up and with a basically a dim bulb tester, uh, just let it slowly, slowly come up and uh, make sure that those capacitors don't go away. So that way we can actually see this thing count without me having to replace these things right here. So that's one of the biggest failure points in these units. Most everything in this is dependable. So, uh, you know, all the tubes, all the tubes look original here. This one here doesn't. This looks like an RCA substitute, but all the counting tubes, they all look like they are HP branded and lots of HP branded tubes. So the tubes are very, very dependable. Lots of people seem to think that tubes are the part that breaks down all the time. Actually, usually it's all the surrounding components that go away and the tubes last. I have tubes from the 20s and the 30s that still work just fine. 
So uh, they're very, very dependable devices. So hopefully these capacitors are okay. Again, I'll bring this up very slowly and uh, let's see if we can make this thing count. Here's a quick look with this thing just slowly coming up on the dim bulb tester. And as you can see, the fan is slowly speeding up. So it's going very, very slowly. And when I say very slowly, I mean like it's, it looks like it's going super fast on there, but it's not. It's just, it's just moving, just moving. And it's moving nice and free too as well. So there's, uh, there's no problems with that fan. It's nice and quiet. So when I bring this up to full line voltage, it'll, you know, whir away pretty loud at that point, right? It's designed to move some air. So I'll let this run like this for about a half an hour and I'm just going to let it just sit here and those capacitors slowly come up and then what I'm going to do is I will click this thing into bypass so I'll bypass the bulbs and then I'll slowly bring it up with a variac and uh, we'll see this thing come to life hopefully and if not then we'll address what's wrong with this thing and uh, make it come to life. All right, let's bring this old counter up together here. So I'm going to bypass the bulbs on the supply. And I'm going to turn the supply on. The Variac is right down at the bottom right now. So I'll turn that on. The light that you see shining on the chassis right now is just the indicator light from that, uh, from that supply on the side here. So I'll turn this up to about halfway. And I'll bring it up just a little more. And I'll bring it up to full line right now. And it looks like it is coming up quite nicely. All the tubes are glowing real nice. No problem so far. I see the regulators lit up there, which means that this thing does have B+, which is a good sign. So look at all those tubes glow. Isn't that a nice looking sight? So what I'll do now is I will reposition this so we can see the face of the unit. And we'll do this over again and see if we can see any life with the Nixie tubes. Let's experience that together. I don't want to look around to the side here and destroy any surprises. I do see some form of an orange glow here, which is a good sign. See that on my hand? So that is a good sign. All right, let's see what it looks like. Actually, I'll shut this off. We can watch all the tubes go down together. Doesn't that look spectacular? I have the isolation transformer and current limited variac supply turned right down. So what I'm going to do is turn the supply on and bring this up slowly. And we'll see if we get any type of action here. I did see an orange glow before, so that is a good sign. So here we go. Turn that on. And I'm going to bring the variac up to about halfway, just right away. See the gate light came on, which is a good sign. And it went out. <laughs> came back on again and went out. It's trying. All right, I'll bring up the Variac some more. This is operating right now at about 65 volts. The line is uh, very, very low at this point, which is a pretty good sign, so I'll bring it up some more. And it'll bring it right up to full line voltage. Well, so far it looks like it's working. So it reset to zeros, the gate is flashing. So the next step is to put an input signal into the input jack and see if we can get a count. So I'll feed this with, oh, say five kilohertz to start and see if we can make this read five, zero, zero, zero. And we'll go from there. But really, it looks like it's functioning. So that really goes to show you the quality that was put into these units. Pretty much everything in this 
is all original and it still works from the 1950s. That's pretty amazing. So that's uh, for Hewlett Packard now for the counters. That's two for two. So uh, hopefully I'm not going to end up biting my tongue. I'll put a signal in this thing and, and see if it reads anything and then we'll go from there. All right, I have a cable here with five kilohertz happening. So what do you think is going to happen? Here we go. Not bad. Look at that. So let's see what the check does. Kind of interesting to see what that is. All right, so it looks like it's reading 60 cycles. All right. So not enough sensitivity. And now it's looking at my signal generator again. Not bad. So let's try the other gate selector here. All right, so turn down the, uh, oops, turn this up this way. And it's working good. All right, let's try 10 kilohertz. Here we go. Not bad, not bad at all. 15 kilohertz. One, five, enter. Look at that. Let's try 30 kilohertz. 30, enter. Oh, it doesn't like that. Sensitivity, maybe? There we go. 29.99, not too bad. 50 kilohertz. Not bad at all. I think we're going to be able to get to 100. Let's try that. 100 kilohertz. It's trying. It's trying. Pretty much 100 kilohertz right there. Not bad at all. It's very close. I can get a little bit more amplitude out of my signal generator. It might be able to get it to read all nines or close to. Not bad. So, let's go back to here, and we'll go to, say, 8 kilohertz. Look at that. It's working. It's working fantastic. So, let's see what the count does. All right, so that basically eliminates the counting function, so you just see it flash the result. It's kind of neat. I definitely like the counting function better. So where it actually displays the count instead of just displaying the result. Well, there you have it. Another piece of HP gear that works absolutely fine from the 50s. It's functioning perfectly. Not even a touch of contact cleaner or anything, really. What does that tell you about the quality? Just absolutely amazing. So that is two for two now. Both of the HP counters work just fine. So I have lots more technology from that era that I'm going to basically bring up and we'll see if it works. And of course, maybe some of that stuff won't and we'll have some stuff to troubleshoot and repair together. I've got Hickok stuff. I have Fluke equipment with Nixie tubes in it. I've got Tektronic stuff, lots of Nixie tube gear with Nixie tube displays like this, uh, Keithley stuff, lots of very, very neat equipment coming. So I hope you enjoyed. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way 
and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.